many of you have heard this before, another local elected official in federal court fighting corruption charges. This time it's former Nassau County Executive Ed Mangano. We'll look at this case and how it compares to a slew of other trials that we've seen and will be seeing soon. Then President Trump breaking out some alternative facts, but it wasn't to the media or at a rally. This was right to the face of the head of one of our closest allies, and then our president bragged about it. Also, President Trump's pick to run the CIA was actively involved in the agency's harsh interrogation techniques and even ran a black site where terror suspects were held and waterboarded. Will that and should that prevent her confirmation? Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman in tonight for Richard French. The Prococo corruption trial has just wrapped up with prosecutors getting convictions on three counts against the former top Cuomo aide. And now it's the Mangano trial starting to heat up. Former Nassau County Executive Ed Mangano and his wife facing a slew of federal corruption charges. Prosecutors say they were involved in a pay-for-play scheme that involved gifts and a no-show job for the missus. Bias 1 Cecilia Dowd is covering it all from the federal courthouse in central Islip. Cecilia? The first witness took the stand Thursday in the trial of former Nassau County Executive Ed Mangano, former Oyster Bay Town Supervisor John Venditto, and Linda Mangano. That witness, businessman Harendra Singh, the man Mangano says was a close family friend. That alleged close family friend now testifying against Mangano. Prosecutors say Mangano and Venditto engaged in a bribe and kickback scheme. And in court Thursday, Singh, after talking about favors he allegedly did for Mangano, was asked if he expected something in return, which was a yes, with Singh saying, quote, whatever our needs were in the county or town of Oyster Bay. He talked about a chair he allegedly bought for Mangano, saying he printed out a picture of the chair and handed it to me, saying, can you look into this and buy me this chair? At one point, the prosecutor asked, did you have a chair like this in your office? Singh responded, no, too expensive. Singh, who owned restaurants, acknowledged that he paid some employees off the books, that he lied on his taxes, and when asked, did you ever pay the correct sales tax to New York State? Singh replied, no. Singh talked about hopes of expanding his businesses, acknowledged that he needed allies in government, and said he met Mangano in 1993 before he was an elected official. Now, two of those alleged major allies in government were John Venditto and Mangano, and Singh talked about his dealings with both men, phone calls and in person, that had to do with securing town-backed loans that prosecutors have said totaled $20 million. His testimony echoed Wednesday's opening from prosecutors. This for that, or quid pro quo, something for something. Cecilia Dowd there uh, reporting for us. Thanks very much. Let's introduce our panel and buckle up. It's a good one. Richard Brodsky is here, former Democratic New York State Assemblyman from Westchester County, also a professor at NYU. That's New York University. Very good. You're doing very well in your trial. Thank you. Tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs> to his left is Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. who will be covering the Mangano trial for us starting on Monday. And across the table is conservative strategist Bill O'Reilly. Delighted to be here with this august group. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dominic is back. It's good or to see even Dominic. A March group. <laughs> Dominic, uh, as you get ready to cover this trial. What, what's jumping out at you? What are you going to be paying closest attention to? Well, there are a lot of salacious, if you will, allegations against Mr. Mangano, his wife, uh, and, and the town supervisor, Oyster Bay. Mm -hmm. So the feds, if you look at Prococo, it, it's somewhat similar. You have a, a tainted star prosecution witness, but uh, that's already pleaded guilty. So the key is how much credibility is this jury going to put into Mr. Singh, the restaurant owner. Now, remember, this is the same guy that could have brought down de Blasio in New York City. So one of the lawyers is hinting or posturing that he might try and call the mayor of New York City. Do, 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 does the, are there backup emails like there were in the Prococo case? That's a good question. Uh, a, 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 a good journalist is always honest. I don't know what the prosecutors are going to introduce as of yet in the case. We've just seen the opening arguments. But I can tell you this much. I will be in the courtroom starting on Monday, and the feds have laid out a solid case. I just don't know how Mangano plans on getting around this. Richard, is there anything from Prococo that informs what we are going to see in the Mangano case. Well, this is something that Richard French and the panels have been dealing with, which is the new standard for deciding when someone in government has committed the crime. There's got to be a real quid, as you heard the reporter mention, and a real quo. 
That in other words, it can't just be setting up meetings, smiling and being nice. There's got to be an exchange of benefits. That, I think, will be the thing to watch. In the Prococo case, it turned out that the jury apparently was quicker on its feet with respect to Prococo on that issue than on the other defendants. In this case, you'll have to wait and see what the evidence is. And Bill, considering how much difficulty there's been in these corruption cases, do you sense because we, uh, of the conviction of Prococo that, that the prosecutors have figured out how to do this better, or do you think the two are just completely unrelated? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know in the case. I, what I do know is that I don't want my wife watching this trial because she keeps asking, when am I going to get a, a no-show job? I mean, it's the <laughs> no-show job for, for wives out there. Looking? I've been looking years. You know, really? Right? Who'd you ask? But I mean, this is going to be <clears throat> a little bit sensational. But Coco more so because he worked for the governor was was his right hand man. No, but there's still a lot of sensational. There's details a lot of sensation. I mean, you have his, his wife was was apparently put on a payroll, paid you know three hundred some some odd thousand dollars to be a taster at the restaurant. That's you know that's that, great. That's one of those good so, jobs. And so you could do that. I, I could I do it. Look, answer, I've done it. I tasted everything. I, I can't answer Andrew the question a little bit that you just asked, Mr. O'Reilly, and I indicated this last night. We have a counselor at the table here, Mr. Harvard himself. Thank Don't you. flatter him. Don't flatter him? Hey. Okay, so you, you have pre-McDonald. That's where these judges got in trouble because they were operating under the old system. But post McDonald, so that's why Sheldon Silver was overcharged, was, was overturned, mm -hmm. because the charging, the reason why these cases were overturned, the charging of the jury, the legal instructions from the judge. So federal judge Valerie Caproni was, over, was overturned in silver because of the way she instructed the jury based on the law. So now the judges know how to guide around post McDonald. So it may not be, what I'm trying to say is we may see more of a string of convictions now after we've gone over this trial period well, after McDonald. It isn't just that the judge is not in charge, is that the the, the, the prosecutors know when to bring a case where they have real evidence Good and point. when they don't. Good point. Before, before we run out of time, I, the way that Cuomo was sort of on the periphery of the Prococo case because of their connection, you mentioned it before, de Blasio's on the periphery of this case because no. of his connection to Singh. No. Um, is that... Yeah. Uh, uh, phony baloney. <laughs> Why? Because... <laughs> he wasn't charged. Yeah. Because Cuomo employed Prococo and there's no establishment of any serious okay. relationship okay. between okay. Singh okay. and de Blasio. Okay. Well, well, here's the record. I, I, love, I love Mr. Brodsky. That's but, on the record. But, 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 but here's the actual factual record. You have the same restaurant owner in Queens and in the case in, in Long Island that ran his businesses based on bribes. This is not, this is not a theory. He's, been, he's, been, he's pleaded guilty to this. So the same restaurant owner Remember, you've had, you got a deputy, former deputy commissioner in New York City suing Mayor de Blasio because he claims, Ricardo Morales, that Mayor de Blasio, de, that City Hall demanded that they give this guy a sweetheart deal for his Queens restaurant. That's the same guy that's on the stand in Queens. So there's a direct correlation. If you listen to de Blasio, see no evil, hear no evil, did no evil. But the fact of the matter is there's a direct this correlation bad just between de Blasio and So that you don't have to make Island. stuff up. De Blasio's got his own set of problems. They're real. The ethical climate stinks. But when you're accusing people of crimes, make the distinctions real and rely on the evidence. There's no parallel. And I think okay. the real question for de Blasio was he got through the 2017 election cycle. And he's in his last term. So he kind of got away. He wasn't charged. And he, it didn't It didn't. Or else he didn't do anything. Or he didn't do anything. Well, I believe the prosecutor said, I know I know you're short. I believe the prosecutor said, post McDonald, it would be tough to get a conviction against the mayor of New York City. They didn't say that he didn't do anything. They, that, those words never came out of the prosecutor's mouth. They did. They did. It'll be interesting to see if any collateral damage comes out that impacts de Blasio through the course of this trial. <laughs> so says you. Up next, the special election in Pennsylvania has taught us a bunch of things. Democrats can win in deep red Trump territory. The Republican tax plan could be a winner for Democrats.